the state of Michigan, District 13. We're calling it, uh, we are projecting for Rashida Tlaib, uh, who will become the first Muslim woman uh, to serve in the United States Congress. This uh, midterm in 2018, hanging over it all, of course, the president, Donald J. Trump, a polarizing figure. The newest Congress featuring more than 100 women, a new record. Among them, the first Muslim women, Michigan's Rashida Tlaib and Minnesota's Ilhan Omar. Here in Minnesota, we don't only welcome immigrants, we send them to Washington. Also winning, New York Democrat Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. At 29, the youngest woman ever elected to Congress. We've got to try to impeach this president. Democrats demanded it from us all over the country. He's done this, he's done this, he's done this. Impeach, impeach, impeach. We have to probe him. We've got to get the taxes. We have to get after him. Now's our chance. Now's our chance, Madam Speaker. What do you say to those? Well, first of all, I, I, what is the motivation? It, it, I don't think we should impeach a president for political reasons. But I don't think we should not impeach him because we think it's politically uh, impeding for us to do so. You just say, my way or we'll shut down the government. We have a proposal that Democrats and Republicans will support to do a CR that will not shut down the government. We urge you to take it. And if it's not good border security, I it won't take it. It is very good border security. And if it's security. not good border security, I won't take it. It's what the Because when you look at these numbers, of the effectiveness of our border security. And when you look at the job that we're doing you with our military... You just said it is effective. Can I, be, can I tell you something? Yeah, you just said Without it's effective. Without a wall, these are only areas where you have the walls. We want to do Where this. you have walls, Chuck, it's effective. We, where you don't have walls, it is not effective. I'll take it. Okay, okay, good. You know what I'll say? Yes. If we don't get what we want, one way or the other, whether it's through you, through a military, through anything you want to call, I will shut down the government. Okay, Absolutely. fair enough. And we I am disagree. proud, and I'll we tell you disagree. what, I am proud to shut down the government for border security, Chuck, because the people of this country don't want criminals and people that have lots of problems and drugs pouring into our country. So I will take the mantle. I will be the one to shut it down. I'm not going to blame you for it. The last time you shut it down, it didn't work. I will take the mantle Good. of shutting down. And I'm going to shut it down for border security. But we security. believe you shouldn't okay. shut it down. Thank you very much, everybody. With the clock ticking, a possible government shutdown right before Christmas. But this evening, has the president given in, at least for now? ABC's Mary Bruce on the Hill. He said he'd shut down the government and take all the blame if Congress didn't fund his border wall. I am proud to shut down the government for border security, Chuck. But just one week later, the White House is retreating. Is there other ways for him to get that money? Conservatives are outraged. Rush Limbaugh says the president got less than nothing. Fox right, and Friends declaring he lost. People who voted for him and want the wall and went to the polls to vote for that wall, they want to know how he's going to do this, and they want to know why he seems to be softening his stance this morning. The president is not softening stance. He has a responsibility to keep the government moving forward. Tonight, Capitol Hill is heading for a short-term fix to keep the government open until early February. But by then, Democrats will control the House, and the chances of the president getting money for his wall will be even more unlikely. All right, so let's get to Mary. She's live up on the Hill again tonight. Mary, it looks like Congress is headed towards that deal that does not include money for the president's border wall. Tonight, the big question, will the president sign it? So we need border security, and the Republicans in the Senate, as you know, are taking it up today. And it's really up to the Democrats, totally up to the Democrats as to whether or not we have a shutdown. Uh, it's possible that we'll have a shutdown. I would say the chances are probably very good, because I don't think Democrats care so much about maybe this issue, but this is a very big issue. Hey, President Trump unveiled the design of the proposed border wall on Twitter. Take a look at that. But will this important project ever be funded? Joining us now, Freedom Caucus Chairman, Congressman Mark Meadows, Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan. Good to see you both. Uh, Congressman Jordan, what's the answer to that question? Will it ever yes. be funded? Yes. Remember, Greg, just last week in the Oval Office, Nancy Pelosi told the President of the United States there aren't the votes in the House to pass a bill with funding for a border security wall. Just last night, 217 Republicans proved her wrong and voted to pass a bill with dollars for a border security wall. This makes good sense. The only reason we're going to be headed to a shutdown here in a few hours is because Democrats don't want to support something that will right. actually secure the border. It is midnight here on the East Coast. Our breaking news, the federal government 
now officially partially shut down. Now, they feel confident that if it only happens for a few days, they can master that messaging. They can say, this is the president fighting for the border wall. That's why the government is <clears> shut down. And they've also got a few days to buy themselves some time because it's over the weekend. Not as many people are at work over the weekend. So you don't see people who have to sit at home that typically would be going into the office. However, if this starts to stretch out into several days, several weeks, going long after the holidays, that's going to be a problem for them because they know that by the minute they are losing leverage because those newly empowered House Democrats are going to take over mm. and things are going to be very different for them. Despite Trump's uh, efforts to secure funding of the border wall, market participants doubt that the government will reopen soon. After the bleak start of the year, investors are flocking to save Havana. Despite a holiday thinned market in Japan, the yen is a certain strength versus the US dollar. Democrat ha megoyant ki ba in kar metawan mohlat beshtar baraye mazakirat dasht. Ama rais Jumhur Trump in peshnahad ra rat karda ast. We really cannot resolve. Ta zamani ke hukumat faal nashavat ma in mushkil ra hal karda na metawanim va ma in mazur ra ba rais Jumhur wa. Is there an end in sight here, uh, given the, the swearing in? How do you see this playing out, or, or is this just a stalemate for a long time? Well, there's been about 20 government shutdowns since 1977, three of which have happened in the last 12 months, which is the most since actually back in 1977 or 1978. So as you mentioned, this is not the first time that this has happened, nor will it be the last. I actually think that there, this is going to go on for a little while because not neither Democrats nor Republicans are... Uh, going to blink. I think that both are very set in their ways. Um, Democrats have made it very clear they do not want to give money on this border wall. Uh, Republicans and President Trump in particular said they're not going to sign anything. President Trump uh, ultimately has the authority here to sign something uh, into law. And if he doesn't want to, it doesn't become law. So in, unless and until President Trump says he would sign something um, that either doesn't include border funding or has a lower number, um, I think we're going to be here for quite some time, uh, which means at least 20 25 percent of our government um, will be furloughed, shut down, um, and we have a, a th hundreds of thousands of individuals that are going without pay and still doing their duties here in the United States. I'm particularly proud to be the woman speaker of the House of this Congress, which marks the 100th year of women having the right to vote. And that we all have the ability and the privilege to serve with over 100 women members of Congress, the largest number in history. We're going to kick 2019 off just slightly differently, um, and I'd like to welcome a very special guest for an appearance here in the briefing room, our very great President Donald J. Trump. Place. I haven't seen it. Beautiful place. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everybody. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I just want to start off by congratulating Nancy Pelosi on being elected Speaker of the House. It's a very, very great achievement. And uh, hopefully we're going to work together and we're going to get lots of things done, like infrastructure and so much more. I know they want to do that very badly, so do I. So hopefully we're going to have a lot of things that we can get done together. And I think it's actually going to work out. I think it'll be a little bit different than a lot of people are thinking. Uh, so I congratulate Nancy. Tremendous, tremendous achievement. And I just wanted to explain to folks that I'm with on the day. As people I've known very well over the last two years, people that have been extremely supportive of what we're doing on the border, they're tough, they're smart. They think, they love our country, they, they have every quality, and I, I'll tell you what, I really know them well, and they have the kind of qualities that we need in our country, and they've done a fantastic job at the border. It's ICE, 
and its Border Patrol, and a man who's really become a friend, in a sense. Uh, Brandon, I, I will say this, uh, Brandon Judd has been a stalwart in terms of justice for people, in terms of fairness, and in terms of the toughness you need. You have some pretty tough situations. It doesn't get much tougher. So I just want to thank uh, Brandon and all of the folks. I'm going to have them introduce themselves right now and also say a few words about the wall, about you can call it a barrier, you can call it whatever you want, but essentially we need protection in our country. We're going to make it good. Uh, the people of our country want it. I have never had so much support as I have in the last week. People love you and you win. And when your son looks at you and says, Mama, look, you won, bullies don't win. And I no. say, baby, they don't. Because we're going to go in there and we're going to impeach the motherfucker. Uh, this is a person that I don't know. I assume she's new. Uh, I think she dishonored herself, and I think she dishonored her family. Using language like that in front of her son and whoever else was there, I thought that was a great dishonor to her and to her family. I thought it was highly disrespectful to the United States of America. I've probably done more in the first two years than any president, any administration in the history of our country. You look at tax cuts, you look at regulations, you look at what we've done for the vets, you look at the rebuilding of the military, and the numbers that we're talking about, and, and many other things. I can give you a list. It's pages long. So I think it's very hard to impeach somebody who's done a great job. That's number one. And, uh, and we even talked about that today. I said, why don't you use this for impeachment? And Nancy said, we're not looking to impeach you. I said, that's good, Nancy. That's good. But you know what? You don't impeach people when they're doing a good job. Congressman, do you think perhaps you should have been more civil about your calls for impeachment? I'm putting out a press release saying I'm now on the powerful rules committee. I'm saying, oh, I'm my saying, dad. Congressman, you should have been more civil about your calls for impeachment. You are. Congressman, you think perhaps you've been more civil about your calls for impeachment? By the way, so much about speaking truth to power. Now, Kerry Pickett also got exclusive footage of Tlaib's Democratic colleagues defending this vulgar tirade and supporting the president's impeachment. I warned you, they never were ever going to tell you what the real agenda is. And the fact that the president went out, campaigned, helped a lot of senators, kept the Senate in Republican hands is a huge win for the president. And he didn't lose 69 seats like Obama or 60 seats like Bill Clinton. Talks are supposed to resume this morning to end the government shutdown, which is now in its third week. And now President Trump is warning that this shutdown could last for months or even years. As correspondent Natalie Brand reports, the president is threatening to declare a national emergency in order to build a southern wall along the Mexican border. Hello and welcome. The partial government shutdown could last months or even years. That's what the U.S. president told Democratic leaders as the two sides met to try to end the impasse. Democrats are refusing to agree to the funding President Trump needs to fulfill his promise of building a wall on the border with Mexico. Instead, they've accused him of holding millions of Americans hostage. Donald Trump says he's even considering using emergency powers to secure the money. Aline McBull reports from Washington. Looking in, it might appear to be business as usual at the White House, but it's far from it. For two weeks, government has been shut down. The Democrats won't agree to sign off on $5.6 billion for a wall along the border with Mexico, and Donald Trump is refusing to back down on his demand that they do just that. The southern border is a dangerous, horrible disaster. We've done a great job. But you can't really do the kind of job we have to do unless you have a major powerful barrier. And that's what we're going to have to have. While there's no agreement, 800,000 government workers are not getting paid and many government departments and services have been suspended. Opposition leaders met Donald Trump today to try to resolve the crisis, but said they found a man who was uncompromising. So we told the president we needed the government open. He resisted. In fact, he said he'd keep the government closed for a very long period of time, months or even years. 
But Democrats themselves are not yielding. They've been emboldened after the swearing in this week of new congressmen and women that now give them the majority in the House of Representatives. Among the freshman politicians who'll be a thorn in the president's side was one of the first Muslim congresswomen, Rashida Tlaib, always seen as someone representing a more combative, brash opposition. But few expected she'd steal the headlines as she did, talking about the president at a Washington reception. Because we're going to go in there, we're going to impeach those comments provoked Donald Trump. Using language like that, I thought that was a great dishonor to her and to her family. But what of that question of impeachment? Well, you can't impeach somebody that's doing a great job. That's the way I view it. Thank you very much. There's no question this week, though, and a resurgent Democratic Party has ushered in a new, more turbulent and divisive time here. Aline McBool, BBC News, in Washington.